guys, how you doing? I hope you're, oh, hang on. That drawer needs to be closed. <clears throat> start again. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Kate Arnell. I hope you are well. So I've been gone a minute, or we could say three months. The reason is because I'm pregnant. Honestly, the thought of even looking at a computer screen, even my phone screen was just nauseating. So I've come through the first trimester, I'm into the second, and I'm feeling human again. As a result, my immune system is slightly compromised, and I've gone and caught myself a cold. I haven't had a cold in about two years, so it feels really weird <laughs> to not only be growing a small human being inside my body, but also to have a bit of a sniffle as well. TMI? Well, this whole video is gonna be pretty much TMI because today's video is an about me video. Um, I haven't actually done one in the entire time that I've had my YouTube channel, and I guess people just sort of figure out who you are through what you say in your video. So I thought instead I would dig out my old memory box, which oh, it's an old Zara box from way back in the day before I knew any better. But I thought what better way to get to know me than through the things I've kept and treasured. And if I think of anything extra or random along the way, I will of course share them with you. Oh, I've just realised the audio hasn't been recording, but screw it. I'm just gonna go with the audio off the camera and you guys will probably, hopefully, not even notice much of a difference. Oh my gosh, okay, I've just seen what's on top. <laughs> okay, let's start with this. Why did that have to be the first thing? This is a copy of Irish Dancing Magazine with yours truly <laughs> on the cover of it. Look at the size of that forehead, people. So for about four years, maybe five, I did Irish dancing competitively because I had a huge crush on Michael Flatley. Some people chose Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys, others Leonardo DiCaprio. My teenage crush was Michael Flatley. So I used to do classes twice a week and then I did competitions on the weekend which were held in random school halls throughout Croydon and Luton and other exotic locations. So yeah, at some point along the way I uh, ended up on the cover of Irish Dancing Magazine. Oh wow, this picture. This was me before an Irish dancing competition. I used to have to put my hair in curlers. Also, that sofa and sleeping bag combination. I mean, there isn't enough floral furniture around these days. That probably just says everything you need to know about me right there. Let's just end the video here, shall we? Oh, so. <laughs> I like puns and I like doodling and at one point I was like, oh, I'd like to make greetings cards or just do little sketches. I don't know, but this was one of them. Growing up, I was always very late at giving people their birthday cards, but I always felt that there weren't really many options of cards available for those of us who were always late at giving a card. So I thought if you did one that was something like, I forgot to say, dot, 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 and then inside it could be happy birthday, Merry Christmas, get well soon, whatever it is. But I just thought, oh, it's a little fun pun. Did I ever do anything with it? No. Do I send cards? Not really anymore. More doodles. So this time of a dragon who couldn't fly. So he had to take a hot air balloon. Basically, I wrote a little kind of poem story years and years ago. I've never done anything with it, but it was about uh, Paul the dragon who's wings were too small to fly basically and so he tries different ways of like trying to fly and join in with all the other dragons but I just did some um like little doodles this little munchkin oh it's a bit of blue tack on the back it's not coming out this little munchkin was our house rabbit growing up he just I still dream about him now actually he was just such an adorable little dude and he basically followed me around everywhere he was like my sidekick um, and he lived for 11 years he hated going outside even though we insisted that he go outside at least once a week um, but it became its core mission to get back inside the house um, he was much more of a carpet lover than a lawn lover um, although he got very excited every Christmas whenever we brought the Christmas tree in because it was like best of both worlds oh a bit of nature but inside cozy by the fire oh, come on hair Let's get some zhuzh. Ah, oh, so this is my favorite picture of our house rabbit that I was telling you about earlier. It looks like he's reading the newspaper. Oh my God. 
<laughs> I've only kept this because, I mean, it's nothing particularly, like, exciting. But, oh, on our honeymoon, we stayed at a place called the Post Ranch Inn, which is in California, in Big Sur. And it's just, oh my god, it's my happy place. Uh, they've got, like, log cabin -y style tree houses in set in this beautiful sort of forest on the sort of cliff edge just flipping beautiful they had like organic cotton bedding food was amazing there were like wild turkeys gobbling around in the forest and some incredible walking uh, spots nearby but so i guess yeah, i've just kept that because it's like triggering an amazing memory oh the post ranch in we will be back I'd like to say soon, but it is exceptionally expensive. Oh, Winnie the Pooh 2006 diary. I used to get these Winnie the Pooh diaries every year, and then I took great pleasure in writing quotes in them. So a bit like you get on Instagram nowadays, but this was kind of pre me being on Instagram. When seeking revenge, walk a mile in the enemy's shoes. You'll be a mile away and have his shoes. It's not how quickly you get there, but how long you last. My God, I was wise. So let's see what I was doing. On this day in 2006, I got myself a pedicure that day. And then I was hosting a TV show in the afternoon. I used to work as an MTV presenter. That was my first ever TV presenting job. I started out on TMF, which was the freeview version of MTV and it stood for the Music Factory. I don't think it exists anymore, but um, I used to do a live show with co-presenter on that it was like a music request show and then i was moved over to mtv and i used to do a show with emma she was emma willis back then but she's a, no emma willis now but emma griffiths back then it was just one of the best jobs to start off with because they sort of just throw you in at the deep end like i had never done live tv before but there I was, just learning as I was going along, interviewing celebrity guests and having someone like talk in my ear. I was at MTV for about two years, kind of jumping between MTV main channel, TMF freeview channel and also MTV hits, I did some content on there as well. There were some jobs that I loved, MTV was one of them, and I used to do a lot for CBBC as well. Um, and there were other jobs that I didn't love quite so much, but I won't name what they were. <clears throat> Let's just say balls were involved. Another cue card. This was from a show called Who Let the Dogs Out and About. And this was another really awesome show to present. And it was for CBBC. And we basically went around the country um, and got kids to bring their dogs along and they got to learn new tricks. Uh, I got to do random things like go trike racing with huskies, uh, I got to interview the world's ugliest dog and I went to a dog wedding and there's a bit of banter, scripted banter, nothing like scripted banter. <laughs> it always comes across so natural. Disney cue card, so I hosted a show called Oh, Project Princess, I think, and it was to time with the release of Princess and the Frog. But as part of it, I got to meet the guy who created Ariel from The Little Mermaid, and I was obsessed with Ariel growing up. I was like, I just want to be part of her world. So just to meet the guy who had like just created her, it was quite surreal. I don't really do TV presenting anymore. I got to a point where I'd been doing it for about 10 years. I hadn't really raised my profile enough to be like a well-known person. And I always found that sort of side of things slightly cringy. I didn't really like the whole schmoozing thing or trying to raise my profile. It got to a point where I was just really struggling to get regular work. I'd had some really good gigs and the feedback had always been really good, but I think it just wasn't my luck basically. I wouldn't say I had a breakdown, but I basically had about three weeks where I just couldn't stop crying and it was like I was mourning the death of that part of my life. That career was kind of over um, and I ended up seeing a guy who was like a life coach basically and he kind of really just helped me reframe things in a really positive light. I decided to 
basically sort of take things into my own hands and start this YouTube channel and uh, actually before that, before I started this, I used to talk a lot about Made in Chelsea because I loved, loved, loved that show so much. So I used to do little weekly roundups of that on uh, my other YouTube channel and sort of take things out of context and be a bit silly with it and it was called Homemade in Chelsea and yeah, I really enjoyed it. So that was my first sort of like little toe into YouTube and then actually I thought well I'm going to set up a channel talking about things that I'm really passionate about and it's so funny because as soon as I basically stopped caring about being a TV presenter or trying to get like a certain job I was offered a job with BBC America um, it was on YouTube but it was writing and hosting their sort of YouTube channel called Anglophenia so I know some of you might have found this channel through that um, because it was like really well known, it did really well, and I was taking over from the previous host, a really lovely girl called Siobhan. So I used to film uh, videos sort of explaining the similarities, but more often the differences, the funny quirks uh, between British and American culture. So there's some really fun videos on like how to use British swear words, or how to have a full English breakfast, um, how to make a proper cup of tea. Boy did I learn a lot doing Anglophenia, but it was really good fun. I loved the process of writing it as well, so I wasn't just hosting, I was doing pretty much the whole thing. I'll put a link to Anglophenia in the info box below if you haven't ever seen it and you fancy a fun, light and mildly educational watch. It was brilliant. I loved it. So these things I used to get every year in my birthday card and they always caught me off guard. You wind it up and then let's see if we can find a card. You place it inside and then you open the card and ooh, gets you every time. Me at Disneyland Paris with Minnie. Oh my goodness me, I love Disneyland Paris. We used to go every year after our summer camping holidays. So my parents would insist that we go to Germany and France camping for three weeks, which actually I loved. Like looking back, I'm like, that. those were just such good holidays. We were outdoors, we would go canoeing or um, climbing up mountains. Oh, there was table tennis. But at the end, if we had been really like well behaved, then we got to go to Disneyland Paris for two days and oh, I just love it. And then when I first started going out with my husband, I insisted that our first trip away together would be to Disneyland Paris. And thankfully, he really enjoyed it. And then we also went on our honeymoon in California. Um, but the rides, like, and the rides there are really good, but you can see they're definitely quite different in California compared to Disneyland Paris. So in Disneyland Paris, the rides are a lot newer and kind of crazier. Like you get on Space Mountain, you're launched at like 45 degree angle, you're doing corkscrews, 360s, going through the galaxy at like crazy warp speed, you're locked in. You get on the same ride in California, the Space Mountain ride, and you sort of just hop into a little buggy with a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I really hope this isn't the same ride because I will definitely be falling out. This was a uh, Buzz Lightyear ride, Lisa Blurst in Disneyland Paris. And just the look of concentration, we didn't actually know this photo was going to be taken by the way. The look of concentration on my husband's face and then the complete look of gormlessness on my face. <laughs> Needless to say, he won that. Round. I know it's not particularly like waist friendly and all that jazz, but Disneyland Paris. Ah, oh, je t'adore. Ah, oh, <laughs> Backstreet Boys ticket stub. Honestly, oh, I think I was a bit late at finding the Backstreet Boys, but when I did, my goodness me, did I love them. And then they came back for a sort of, I don't know what you want to call it, comeback tour or something a few, a few years ago, probably about, when was this? 2008, so 10 years ago, uh, without Kevin, but Kevin's back in the band now, so it's all good. I was also a huge Britney Spears fan, which actually, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I've got a Britney Spears CD in there, and it has the instrumental version on the back, which meant it was like the sort of karaoke version, and I could kind of go, oh baby, baby, along with the backing track. But as well as pop music, now I also love, love, love country music, and I'm obsessed, obsessed, with Florida Georgia Line and actually Morgan Wallen, who collabed with them recently, is really, really good. If you get a chance to listen to him, ugh, just so good. This is actually the first ever photo I took of my husband and I was 
building a little snowman, it snowed, and I was like, can you just put your hand in the picture? <laughs> so that's his rubber gloved hand giving a thumbs up. But that's actually the first photo I ever took of him. A voucher, I've just found a voucher, that's exciting. One of my best friends very kindly gave me some people tree vouchers. Um, as thank you for being her bridesmaid, and I'd forgotten that I'd actually put <laughs> put them in there, so I was lucky. Oh, that is a photograph of my husband on an experience gift that I gave him. So, especially like in the zero waste lifestyle, giving experiences instead of physical gifts is a really great way of like saving on resources and not having so much clutter and I think people remember experiences a lot more than they do like a physical item but everybody is different some people's love language is gifts so anyway um <laughs> this was many years ago I bought him flight in a gypsy moth plane it was like a two-seater so the pilot sits behind you and you sit in the front and basically get to fly the plane um, all I would say is that if you're buying someone a gift, <laughs> make sure it's not something that's on their fear list. But to be fair, he still <laughs> talks about this experience to this day, but I do think it might have given him a mild fear of flying. You guys probably won't believe that this is even me. That photograph is me with bleach blonde hair. So I actually used to do quite a bit of like hair modelling, but yeah. I <laughs> ended up with some quite like random photos from it. It looks like I'm dressed as a gorilla. But my goodness, the money to be made, it was just insane. I remember I had to do one with Schwarzkopf back in the day. I was like flown over to Germany and I think it's the most amount of money I've ever been paid in my life. Oh, that's a nice picture. That's myself my brother and my dad. My dad used to have long hair. So my dad sadly passed away about, I think it was 10 years ago, so 2008. Um, but that was a picture of him picking us up after school. And yeah, I think that was just a random park bench and he asked to pass a by to take a photograph. It's a nice photo, I like that one. That's a picture of me looking slightly surprised. Practicing my eyebrow raising. Start early. Oh, that's another photo. Okay, so that's my dad and me. So one of my earliest memories actually is being in the snow with my dad. This is probably something you guys didn't know about me. I am an official member of the Garfield Club. Big fat hairy deal, I know. But the big fat hairy oath on the back says, as a member of the Garfield fan club, I promise to abide by the fat cat credo. Life, laziness, and the pursuit of pasta. I will pig out more, work out less, and sleep through all Mondays. Oh yeah, and I pledge to avoid work, whatever that is. I think I might have taken some of that too literally in my adult life, to be honest. I was, I mean, I still love Garfield, but I was a big Garfield fan. Like, I used to collect all of the books uh, with the comic strips in and had things like Garfield money box. Just a lot of Garfield paraphernalia. Garfield big fat hairy handbook. It says top secret for your paws only, so I'm afraid I cannot divulge what is in here. I think we're getting towards the end. Ooh, I hate, hate, hate coriander, but I feel like a lot of people know that anyway. Ugh, I'm an, I think it's INFP on the Myers-Briggs test, and it turns out I'm a very values-driven person and would struggle with a desk job, quite creative, and I'm sort of not really driven by making money, I'm driven by sort of following my value. Which sort of makes sense for somebody who's living a zero waste lifestyle. Like, I feel like it comes quite easily to me because I'm very like passionate about it and it aligns with my values. So I don't think I'd really appreciated that until I did the personality test and realized just like how many different types of personalities there are out there. And not everyone is values driven. Like I sort of just assumed that of course everybody else would be, but apparently not. There's another test that I did that I thought was really good. It's the Myers-Briggs test. Oh yeah, the five love languages. So gifts is really low. It's like the last one for me on the five love languages. But I now appreciate that for some people it's like really important. It's their love language. It's maybe less sort of 
strict about gifts and I definitely have some family members who are like you could just it's just important to them so I sort of take a more considered approach um, when it comes to gifts but I don't rule them out completely now whereas I went through a phase for a couple of years and be like no oh, gifts no gifts whereas yeah I realize now and appreciate now that it's definitely really important to some people but, but yeah my top love language was I think physical touch like I love a massage uh, and also spending quality time with my husband those two were like pretty top for me his is acts of service that was his number one so it explains why he's always doing the hoovering and the washing up like that's how he communicates love but that's also how he receives love so whenever I sort of channel my inner domestic goddess and actually get around to doing some washing up or a bit of hoovering or tidying up he is just so like appreciative and I also find stuff like personality types really interesting. I just finished reading a book called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking and I just, I found that such an eye opener. Uh, I don't really do any other exercise apart from walking but I just love a good walk. I'm a Scorpio. Watch out. I think that's pretty much it. I've been living in London for 12 years and I met my husband in 2007. 2000, yeah, 2007. And I will do a whole couple of videos actually, I think, on uh, pregnancy and my experience so far and little things that I've learned. Uh, and also <laughs> some serious, serious zero waste fails in the first trimester department. Let's just say that. I think that's pretty much it guys. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of extra information about me. I really have no idea what you'd like to know. <laughs> Don't put it in the comments because I'm not making another About Me video. I've got to clear up all of this crap on the floor now. As we know, I'm not particularly good at clearing things away, but I'm going to try. Have a great day, guys, whatever you're doing. Bye.